So double noir, um, so unusual, so unique. Fact of the matter is it's not unique and it's not unusual at all. Uh, the blend of Gamay and Pinot Noir has a long tradition in the home of those two grapes in Burgundy and the Cote d'Or, where they're often blended together with what the French call the pastu grain, or as it comes. These are common field blends that are put together, and, and they're natural partners for each other. Their soft acidity, their generous berry fruit, and, and approachability makes them amazing blending partners. Not a lot of people see this kind of uh, blend. You don't see it very much in the commercial market, but I think it's a very exciting addition to the LE20 package that we have this double noir now. Uh, when I look at the regions of origin for these two grapes, it makes perfect sense for me. Um, you know, when we talk about the Pinot Noir, it's coming from the Marlboro area of New Zealand. So, you know, when people picture New Zealand in their mind, and I talk Marlboro, they think Sauvignon Blanc, and rightfully so. Uh, it is the home, but there are tremendous amounts of plantings of Pinot Noir in the Marlboro area. It's got a, a, a long great growing history, this alluvial plain over extinct riverbeds uh, with, is redolent with stone and a variety of, of different matter underneath the, the, the topsoil, which allows the grapes to get a sense of place. Uh, and the, because the Kiwis are so new to the industry, I mean, yeah, they've been making wine since the late 1800s, but really Marlboro was only seriously planted in 1973 by what was known as, uh, at that time, uh, Montana Vineyards and is now uh, Brancott. Uh, they're the ones that really put the, the wine region on the map. And, and they're fairly youthful in terms of the overall wine world. The result is, is that they're able to take top quality great material and apply leading edge technology to make Sauvignon Blancs and Pinot Noirs and a variety of other grapes that are clean, varietally specific, and extremely precise. And, and I know that when people think of Pinot Noir in New Zealand, their mind instantly goes to Central Otago, but I think that you will find in the long term that the Marlboro Pinot Noirs will eclipse them and, and will show uh, incredible varietal character and, and will offer the Pinot Noir experience that, that our customers would expect um, at, at great, uh, great value. The interesting thing about this, this part of the world is in the, just above the, the Antarctica, there's a hole in the ozone as a result of uh, consistent use of chlorophyll carbons in, in, the, in society. Now we're backing off on that. But the fact of the matter is, is that the ozone layer on the southern part of the planet is quite thin. And this does affect the Pinot Noirs that are grown in New Zealand. Um, lucky for us, the effect is a positive one. So what happens, you get more solar radiation in the southern island, especially in the Marlboro area, and the result is that the Pinot Noir, in order to protect themselves from that solar radiation, develop slightly thicker skins. Uh, that results in a uh, wine that's a bit more heady, a bit richer, uh, a bit more structured and, and rich. And it's, it's an ideal growing area for that grape. I think the Pinots that are coming from Marlboro are very precise, varietally correct, and exciting. Because not only do they have that light, delicate, ethereal nature that we expect from Pinot Noir, but give us generous berry fruit, soft, silky tannins, and, and a, a medium weight mouthfeel that wine consumers love in red wines. And then we have Lodi, California for Gamay. Uh, what an exciting region to grow Gamay in. Uh, I talked about this a little bit with the last wine. It's the north end of the Central Valley. It's hot, but still benefits from the cooling mists of the San Pablo Bay, which go right up to the Sierra foothills, which are just to the east of Lodi. Uh, the end result is that you get all of the heat and, 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 and sunlight necessary to take that Gamay to full ripeness, uh, but still in a dry climate, which yields fully ripe, phenolically correct, healthy grapes. Not a lot of need for spraying or anything like that. And because they get these influences, the cool nights from the San Pablo Bay, the result is that the, the Gamay is actually able to retain its bracing acidity 
which, which counteracts uh, and, and, and works with the Pinot Noir to create a wine that is both generous in red berry fruit, uh, it has soft and silky tannins, uh, but still is balanced and drinks well. So on its own, it's absolutely fantastic. And as a blend, it's pretty cool. Uh, the the great variety that we great varieties that we have Pinot Noir. All right, Pinot Noir. When we talk about the finest red wines of the world, very often people instantly go to Bordeaux, and they think about the first growth, Latour, Lafitte, and the like. Cabernet Sauvignon-based wines that are released in this market. I'll I'll talk about my market, British Columbia, Canada, and those wines are two thousand dollars a bottle on release. But if you go to the Côte d'Or, especially in the Côte d'Or, and you look at wineries like Domaine Romani Conte, 100% Pinot Noir, these wines are released at prices, if you could get them, are released at prices of up to 10,000 euro a bottle. What that tells you is that Pinot Noir is something special, that the wine world is paying attention, and that they make wines that are ethereal and of interest. You know, Pinot is a large grape, thinner skin, and what that gives you is a lot of berry flavors uh, with soft tannin, which makes them immediately drinkable. In the glass, they tend to be a bit paler. You can see through them, but still, they're redolent uh, aromas of berries, and I'm talking like raspberries and cherries and strawberries, backed up by this forest floor kind of mushroom and truffle kind of nuance is, is fantastic. And when I, when I talk about the forest floor, you know, I want you to think about when you're walking through the woods on a spring day and the sunlight streaming through the trees and there's all the smell of the vegetation and the promise of new birth and, and, and what is to come. And, it, and it's that rich smell. Uh, this is exactly what Pinot Noir gives you. Uh, and, then, and then to be backed up by Gamay, this is super exciting. Often Gamay 100% varietal, Pinot 100% varietal. In, in, in our market to see them blended together, this is something unique. And for me, when I'm talking to clients, and I call these tableside talking points, how can I sell this wine? What is enticing about this? What makes it something that people want to experience? And the fact that you're taking Pinot and Gamay and you're blending them together, this is a very exciting thing. You know, Gamay is a grape that deserves attention and note. Unfortunately, Gamay has had its reputation sullied by things like Beaujolais Nouveau. Uh, and the, you know, what they do with the, with the Gamay grape in, in that incarnation is they take the grapes in whole clusters, they chuck them in the tank, and they sit in the tank, and the weight of the grapes breaks the grapes in the bottom of the tank. They exude their, their must or their juice. Enzymes on the skin kickstart a kind of fermentation. Uh, the tank starts to fill up with carbonic gas or carbon dioxide, uh, carbonic maceration, they call it. And you end up with this kind of bubble gummy, jammy, juicy wine that is easy drinking, but really not that important. But if you take Gamay and you treat it traditionally and you vinify it off its stems in the classic fashion, which is being practiced in the 10 named villages of Beaujolais, the crew villages, you're getting wines that are very exciting. And I, and I dare to say one of the most exciting things in Burgundy today are the crew Beaujolais. And it shows you the potential of Gamay. Uh, Gamay is spreading throughout the world. We're seeing it planted everywhere. Uh, plantings in British Columbia, where I live in California and Australia, to show you how approachable and exciting this grape is. It has a fine texture with silky tannins. It's amazingly soft on the palate, but still gives rich, plummy nuances, uh, backed up with cherry and red and black fruits, and you know, and black fruits like black raspberry and black cherry, red fruits like strawberry and cherry. Um, just beautiful and very ethereal. To see the two of them blended together in this age-old tradition of Burgundy is really, really exciting. So in the glass, I would always expect it to be a little pale, so I should be able to see right through it. But don't let that think that this is going to be a wallflower of a wine. I think it's got a lot to offer. On the nose, purple flowers, berries, spice, 
breadfruits, um, and again, backfilled with a little bit of that plummy nature of Gamay. Makes it extremely pretty in the glass and very enticing. I want to have a drink. Let's give some a try. Hmm. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Just delicious. Uh, I could drink this wine all on its own, or it could go with a variety of different foods. And, and I think about things like uh, a fresh fruit platter with blueberries and strawberries and plums and whipping cream. I see white meat, uh, grilled chicken or pork with a, a, with a plum sauce. Uh, I think that, you know, when we looked at this, this pairing, we talked about having things like strawberries, fresh or dried, uh, brie cheese, those soft white cheeses are, are just exceptional. And, and so for those of you um, who are at home, have a little bit of wine, if you've managed to get a little bit of food in front of you, I really encourage you to try this wine and, and with a food pair because not only is it amazing, delicious, soft and approachable all on its own, the complexity of Pinot Noir, I mean, like we're talking about a world being grape that commands prices higher than any other grape variety in the world, uh, backed up with Gamay, which is uh, enjoying increasing uh, popularity. I think that these two could be a, a real treat. So I'll just give that a little sip. Mm. Gentle tannins just enveloping the mouth, this beautiful berry flavor going through and then with a bite of this fresh strawberry. Mm. Acid, bright, lifted. Try the wine again. You know, if I thought that this wine was absolutely delicious all on its own, uh, being paired with food, it, it's transcendent. This is the kind of red wine that you can bridge white wine drinkers to red wine with. So if you've got people that are drinking white wine all the time and they're looking for something new, something exciting, they want to experiment with a red wine, this Double Noir is super cool. For your wine geeks that are totally into red wines and, and are looking to expand their horizons and, and something that is at once familiar, tried, and true, but new to them, this version of the Passu Grain, the Gamay Pinot Noir blend is absolutely fantastic. For me, what is the most exciting thing about this wine is on its own, silky, gentle, soft, ethereal, uh, entrancing. It just, I take a sip, I want to come back to it again and again and again. And it just shows so beautifully in the glass with lighter food items, incredible. The, the acidity that comes through from the Pinot Noir really giving it tremendous balance. Uh, I'm really excited about this particular red wine and I think that your clients will be really thrilled to experience a red wine that is something different from what they're expecting. And dare I say that I think this particular wine uh, served slightly chilled, I know, crazy talk, right? But at about 12 to 14 degrees, so, you know, not room temperature, which is about 16 to 18, but slightly chilled. So in the fridge for about 20 minutes before you serve it and then pull it out or jam it in some ice for five or 10 minutes before you show it, will really show the complexity of this wine, will highlight the acidity, but also demonstrate the interest that it gives with this beautiful red berry fruit and these soft and silky tannins. You know, I can promise you that when we go to the end of the presentation, we'll have the cameraman pan over to my table. This will be for sure the one glass that will be empty.